Hello out there, all my dear friends on YouTube. This is Lady Sylvia, and today I want to talk to you about Victorian chromolithographs. They are actually a type of lithography that's done on stone. Each color has to be done separately, and they are done on usually on a stone or a zinc plate. This is a fabulous large one of a baby asleep in a very elaborate bassinet. Let me hold this up so you can see all the way to the top. It's quite a beautiful piece. And they were very popular in the days in the 1840s, 50s, 60s, all the way through to almost the 1930s, uh, long before people were relying on heavily on newspapers and magazines. People used to get a lot of these as promos from uh, stores. Here are some that are reproduced from West Germany. And they come on sheets like this, upside down, right side up. As you can see, they're all beautiful little children or ladies, angels, common subjects. Look at this beautiful. These are old. The paper is already browning from the back, but you could see this is a very early chromolithograph of an angel with pansies. The colors are usually brilliant, like as you see. Each single color had to be applied separately. Look at the water lilies. It's just absolutely stunning. This is a genuine Victorian piece. A couple of these that I'm about to show you. These come on sheets like the ones before, and they were printed in Germany. So these were used for calling cards, which I'll do a separate video on Victorian calling cards. These were cut out and then glued to the front of your calling card. Here's a beautiful girl. This is also another Victorian reproduction made in West Germany. It says right there, printed in West Germany, gesh, 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 gesh is a registration and you'll see that on the back of doll heads as well look at that how beautiful that is oh i love these these are fans look at this look at these fans aren't they something now people back before the days of tv radio People would sit by the fire and they would cut these out and put them in albums and they called them Victorian scraps and so the albums would be called a scrap album. This is long before the days of scrapbooking that they do today. This is much earlier and people would cut out things from newspapers, magazines, whatever hit their fancy, whatever they thought was beautiful. And here's some little angels. These are all, you glue them into your little um, books, or you can also um, put them on a calling card if they're small enough. Look at this, how pretty. See, it says printed in West Germany. So these are reproductions of the old Victorian ones. But they are nevertheless collectible now because nobody sees them anymore. These are old chromolithography. Take a look at this. You can always tell the really great examples of chromolithography by the detail and the beauty of the colors. And here's a little girl. Look at the lace. See the quality? Now you can tell. She's playing with her cat, but look at her clothing. You flip this over. These cards were meant to be cut out and probably put in an album. That little doll is called a Punchinelle. Look at the detail. This is one of my favorites, a little girl playing with her French doll. Look how beautiful. Absolutely stunning. These were sent to me by a very sweet, wonderful friend who also collects um, these chromolithographic pieces. And you see the, crumb, the, the paper crumbles from acid. 
Oh, look at this. Oh, these are beautiful. The shepherds in the field. Look at that. And we talked about these images in the cameo videos. They reproduce these into tiny images for cameos. The lovers. Isn't that beautiful? They're very detailed. This is another one that is a reproduction, but just absolutely stunning. Look at this. The little, little child with the bouquet of roses. Now, here's one that was probably from an album. You see the shape of the three-leaf clover. Look at the detail of her clothing. This is where you can always tell the original old ones versus the reproductions. The detail is astounding. This was all done by hand. Look at her clothing. Many of these pieces advertise the company. Not all of them do. This one is a calendar from 1898. And it's a little girl running home in the snow. These are French. These are, this one's called The Autumn Girl, print, painted by M. Simody, Paris. Look at that, how beautiful. And here's another one called The Water Lily Girl. Look at that. Oh my God, that's spectacular. And people would, would put these behind glass and use them as pictures on their walls, you know, uh, in the days before uh, having photography. And uh, a lot of people couldn't afford a lot of paintings and pictures. Look at this beautiful lady. This is an old chromo lithograph. Let me see if there's anything on the back. No. But look at the detail. It's just spectacular. Here's another image of a beautiful lady. Ladies were, oh, look at that hat. The outfits, look at the size of that belt. And look at her gloves, how, how long the gloves go all the way up. These were also fashion things that women did. Just spectacular. love the hats look at that that's the same lady as the other one these are uh definitely <clears throat> they're old they're known as die cuts because they were cut out exactly along the line of the image and uh these are old very old and they are fragile little boy with his tennis These are old, these are reproductions, but I just thought they're really sweet. The baby in the bassinet, and here one is with forget-me-nots and the other one's with apple blossoms. I just thought those were very sweet. This is an old one. Beautiful lady. Oh, I just think those are so incredibly beautiful. Look at these two angels. This is also a reproduction. And then an angel on the back. Isn't that beautiful? And people can use these for Christmas, make your own Christmas ornaments. Um, they'd be beautiful on a package. I just don't use them that way, I save them. Look at that, how beautiful. Things were cherished back in the day when people really cared. These are old chromolithic die cuts. And here's a fabulous angel. A little Christmas angel. So people, um, before the days of uh, mass production of radio and television, um, stores relied on advertising trade cards and that's what these are and they are for um they gave one to the customer so you'd bring it home 
course, the women would tape them or glue them into the scrapbooks, but they were also a reminder of where you bought your groceries and what you should buy at the grocery store. This is, for example, <clears throat> they gave away pictures. See, it says, if you want a handsome picture card of which this is a fair sample, buy a package of Lion Coffee. It is composed of a successful combination of Mocha, Java, and Rio coffee. Never sold in bulk. A beautiful picture card in every package. Say, Lion is the king of coffees. So then a woman would go to the store, she'd say, oh, oh, I remember that coffee, I gotta go buy some. Now, here's the oddest little thing. Mulligong, I never heard of that, that's a platypus. Or they're calling it a mulligong, um, sure, okay. And this is about Arosa, Arosa coffee. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. Just a wonderful, and here's another one that says, ask your grocer for the cracker mark stapler. So Trenton, New Jersey. And here the hunter obviously killed the wolf because there's like a blood stain. That's kind of gross, but you know, I guess not to the people who had trouble with wolves. This is funny. Bed bugs outwitted and the guy's sleeping in a hammock. Compton Brothers. Look at the little bed bugs. They're all like, hey, wait a minute. What happened here? And he's sleeping in a hammock. That's funny. Probably selling insecticide. This one is advertising newspapers and periodicals on Warren Street in Boston. Pretty amazing. Look at this one. This one is um, J.P. Coates Cotton Thread. And it's showing a, a lady in a kimono. This is buy a standard rotary shuttle sewing machine. <laughs> well, that's amazing. Look at these. These this is advertising a, a shoe or a boot. Remember standard screw fashion soles never rip. No nails to hurt feet or wear out your stockings. Oh my goodness, look at that. There's a lovely card. Now what is, oh, look at this. This is also comfort for the children through the medium of an easy fitting, comfortable and good wearing shoe. These were common, these anthropomorphic um, cards of vegetables. Here a lady, her skirt is a cabbage. And then it's advertising L.L. Crocker's Buffalo Honest Fertilizers. Ammoniated bones, superphosphates, and pure ground bones. And look at this one, same company. A guy with his body is a watermelon. That's pretty funny. Here's a beautiful card. And this one is advertising a department store. And this one, look how beautiful that is. This was pasted in an album. Are you superstitious? Read this. So this is about crescent flower. Oh, the things they would say and advertise, it just astounds you. This is another one of Lion's Coffee. Lion's Coffee was a big, um, Advertiser, so you will see a lot of things advertising their coffee. There's another one. And so did uh, so Singer Sewing Machine and uh, thread companies like J.P. Coates. Here is grand opening of Wilmont's Mammoth One Price Clothing House on two from 250 and 254 Essex Street, Salem, Massachusetts. Woohoo! Look at the birds on this uh, ship's wheel. Again, it's a lion's coffee. And this one is advertising Malena, the best remedy on earth, 
This is like, I guess, a cream for colds. Um, kind of like Vicks VapoRub. Does anybody know what that is or still use it? See, for neuralgia, rheumatism, stiff joints, etc. For sore lips, mouth, and throat. Oh, boy. They advertised like a cure-all. Look at it. But I like the gold in this one. Isn't that pretty? Okay. This one is advertising, uh, let's see, valuable seed distribution. I don't know what this is. This is cream java coffee, tea white. Oh boy. Wheeler and Wilson Manufacturing, another um, image of a lady dressed in a kimono. We learned white wear a sewing machine. Here's a little boy in a kilt. And he's advertising R&J Gilchrist. Dry goods in the, by the old stand on Winter Street in Boston. And this is the Youth's Companion advertisement of a magazine for children. Here is a uh, black and white lithography. The handsomest, cheapest, J.W. Griswold, 1882, cloaks and dolmens, etc., ever offered in Monroe Street in Chicago. Wow, these are so interesting. Oh, look at this. Back when women wore these kind of crushing corsets. So this one claims it has quilted sides and will not break. Uh, yeah, pretty much broke people's ribs. That's what it did. Really damaged a lot of women back then, wearing those horrible corsets. Here's Cal, Cal Curtis and Company, Fine Shoes in Rochester. This one's showing, um, oh, they also did a lot of uh, provincial and um, showing different, different countries. This one says Italian. Huh, look at this. Wheat bitters prepared by the Wheat Bitter Company, New York. Take it and all ills shall vanish. What a bunch of baloney. Most of this was alcohol and uh, said to cure malaria, solve every single thing. Oh my God. Half this stuff was poison. My husband is a physician and he gets a chuckle reading all these nonsensical cures, which half of them are absolutely poisonous. So here's one, uh, advertising handkerchiefs, ladies and gents, silk, linen, white, hem stitch, colored, woven borders, printed borders, mourning handkerchiefs. Wow. Here's Clark's Mile End Spool Cotton. A lot of people have seen these. Sopine, I love that because she's holding a little doll. Sopine is a type of soap. Here's one that's die cut in the shape of a spool. So you would always remember this. Clark's O-N-T spool cotton. Here's a lovely lady with her little plants. She must be advertising Acme soap, the best bar soap made. This one is Singer Sewing Machine. Look at the beautiful chromolithography. You can always tell the quality versus the poor reproductions. A lot of the store advertisements use poor reproductions. Like this, this is uh, not, not as good, but it's still old. These are very, very old. Reynolds Brothers Fine Shoes in Utica, New York. Johnson Brothers Anodyne Liniment. Oh, please, unbelievable. This one is Novelty, Beauty, and Fashion, Maison Demarest. Ag agencies everywhere, reliable patterns. So this is uh, selling dress patterns. Here's Clark's Mild End. That's sewing thread. Fabulous images, though. Look at this. This one's advertising Scott's Emulsion, the great remedy for children. And most of that was uh, uh, castor oil. Say, oh, cod liver oil. Ugh. Oh, that's so disgusting. My mother used to make us take cod liver oil when we were young. 
It's one of the things I'll never forget. It's so beyond disgustingly gross. These are glove manufacturer, obviously. Oh, this is so cute. Look at this. Advertising thread. Black, white, and colors for hand and machine. Look at the little puppy dogs. Love those. These are solar tip shoes manufactured by John Mundell and Company, Philadelphia. Showing kids at play. This is an insurance company ad. Home insurance. I just think they're so beautiful. I hope you're enjoying these. I have been collecting for many, many years. This is another medical uh, Winslow soothing syrup for children teething. And you know why they calm the kids down? Because it had alcohol in it. Imagine giving your kid alcohol today. It's insane. Here's Bon Ami. Now Bon Ami is still, still making um, uh, their product for uh, scrubbing your sink and stuff. They still make this stuff. And then here is um, an advertisement. Look at how beautiful she is. Advertising Days Soap. Oh, the days gone by when people actually, you know, relied on this type of advertising for their shopping and their needs. Anyway, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this little adventure into the far away and forgotten past of the Victorian times. And I would love to hear from you if you collect them also. I really love them and enjoy them. And I have uh, collected them for many, many years. Believe it or not, at one time, 30-something years ago, I had so many trade cards that when I had a cabin up in the Adirondacks, I actually papered the entire walls with antique trade cards. I know that sounds absolutely insane, but I had that many. And I just thought it would be a cute idea to put advertising all over the bathroom walls. And then I varnished it all on and it actually came out really pretty. But anyway, that's how many I used to have. Now, a lot of these things I have to keep away um, from my cats, but also I have to be very careful because I do have asthma and many of these pieces if they're not stored properly, they will get moldy or they were moldy. So you have to kind of find a way to alleviate the mold in them. But I do enjoy them. I still cherish them. And I hope you enjoyed looking at a little bit of the past. Thank you so much, all of you out there. You guys are wonderful. I, I really mean it from the heart. Um, I think there's so many wonderful people out there on YouTube. I wish I could know you all personally. Take care and God bless you.